All right, kiddos, welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. And our next guest on the show is Grant F. Smith. He is director of the Institute for Research, Middle Eastern Policy. That's I-R-M-E-P dot org. The Institute for Research, Middle Eastern Policy in Washington, D.C. He's the author of the book Spy Trade, America's Defense Line, Foreign Agents, Deadly Dogma, and Neocon Middle East Policy. Jeff Stein, the great Jeff Stein of the Washington Post, calls Smith a Washington, D.C. author who has made a career out of writing critical books on Israel spying, Israeli spying and lobbying. Philip Weiss says he's, uh, the best investigative work is being done by Grant Smith at Earmep. And boy, is he right about that. Welcome back to the show, Grant. How are you, man? Hey, Scott. Great to be back. Uh, I'm glad you're uh, getting through the uh, Florida heat there. Yeah, it's actually really nice outside right now, but uh, the best part about it is the rain. I've been living in Los Angeles for two years, and it's just like the Bill Hicks joke. you got to be a lizard to like Los Angeles. It's, it's <laughs> sunny every day, and I love sunny. I love L.A. weather. It's great. It's never more than 82 degrees or something. It cools down every night. It's beautiful, but, man, it was – I'll tell you, the smell of a rainstorm driving down the freeway in, in here in Florida is just – this is the greatest thing. It reminded me of Texas so much. I haven't smelled rain in two years, Grant. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes every once in a while those hurricanes roll in and wipe everything off the sand dunes people live on. So you got to be careful of that. I lived down there for a while, too. But uh, watch your back for the hurricanes. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll be able to get out of here in one piece before all that kicks in. <laughs> all right. So now, um, well, here's a overly broad and... Perhaps stupid question. Well, first of all, let me tell everybody to go and, and look at uh, your articles at antiwar.com as well. Uh, they heard me just say irmep.org, right? That's the website for IRMEP. And yeah. um, they can also look up original.antiwar.com slash smith-grant. That's slash smith-grant. And you can find uh, a great many uh, articles by Grant Smith about uh, obviously, primarily, America's relationship with Israel. And now, one of the things going on here is these bogus peace talks with Likud, as though this is going to go anywhere. Uh, but Obama pretending to follow up on his Cairo speech and push for peace in the Middle East. And uh, somebody, I don't know who, Grant, brought up the idea that, you know, what you ought to do is release Jonathan Pollard. And if you'll release Jonathan Pollard, America, then maybe we'll consider slowing the rate of growth of the colonies in the occupied territories. You think Obama's going to go for that? Well, that's a really good question, and that's, uh, that was the subject of the last thing I wrote for antiwar.com. But the really you know, interesting question is, you know, why are there even any so-called peace processes going on right now? And it seems to me, and I think Phil Giraldi kind of hinted at it, is that these are 100% driven by the U.S. elections, by pretending to have some sort of peace process going on. This kind of gets the lobby uh, off of Obama's back and off of some of the Democrats' back and maybe even allows them to do some fundraising with, the, with key donors. And in the meantime, you have this really uh, curious process where there are no ground rules, and it's the amazing game with no rules where everything's on the table. And there were two different letters that people have been talking about that have been leaked. One of them by David Mikofsky, who's from the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Uh, he said that Obama offered uh, Netanyahu all sorts of concessions and U.N. support and weapons if only they would uh, freeze the settlement for two more months. And if that's true... That shows you this is 100% driven by the elections. And apparently there's also a letter to the uh, Palestinians saying that uh, Obama would be willing to, to push for some concessions there around the 67 borders. But, you know, the, uh, the, Pollard, the whole Pollard offer seems extremely, uh, you know, like it's the most extreme part of this, where you would take somebody who did enormous damage to the United States for money in a case that wasn't even investigated properly and throw that on the table as well 
I just think shows uh, the extreme uh, nature of uh, what the uh, what the lobby in this country is willing to do, because this has been an on-off push uh, for for many decades now, and it's it's really clear from some of the other cases of, of pardons that have been related to weapon smuggling. Uh, that there is a drive to kind of get this thorn in the side of U.S. Israel relations, get it out of the side, and and uh, and, and put it uh, attach it to any vehicle that uh, can possibly attach to that's sufficiently strong enough to pull it off. The interests of a tiny little Maryland-sized foreign country can completely and totally override the interests of the American empire. It, it's almost like, you know, a CIA coup in South America somewhere where our government controls somebody else's government. Is that too much hyperbole for you or what? I think there's one overriding factor, and that is there doesn't seem to be, again, there are no rules. Any of our laws don't apply to this relationship. One of your favorite people, uh, David Sanger, was yeah. on a a Washington DC radio program this morning and somebody called in uh, and after asking about Pollard which is something they didn't want to talk about this panel of journalists all mainstream journalists they asked Sanger uh, are the settlements considered illegal by the United States and David Sanger kind of hemmed and hawed and he said well the US doesn't consider them to be helpful blah 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 and meanwhile uh, another journalist from a Middle Eastern outlet chimed in and said, "There, you know, all the international laws that they break." Uh, and so, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's this this willingness to, you know, be hyper lawyers, inventing all sorts of you know rules and regulations that Iran is violating, and then trumpeting those to the press, but completely ignoring the fact that uh, our own president could, uh, in two minutes, make a declaration saying, you know, we're going to wipe out this problem of illegal settlements. And, and as president, I've instructed the U.S. Treasury Department to shut down all illegal flows into the West Bank and for the IRS to pull the status of any charity found to be laundering money into West Bank settlements. He could do that in an afternoon. But the fact that our press, uh, you know, our elite media and our own president uh, won't look at this as a legal issue, which it largely is, but instead, you know, are, are only handling it in, in the most political way, uh, just really shows how much governance has declined in this country. Yeah, well, you know, they say there are the three biggest lobbies in D.C. are the AARP, we want the young people's money, give it to us. And then the NRA, go ahead and take everybody's guns. We're here to pretend like we're here to protect gun rights. And then you have the Israel lobby. And I don't know, you can argue about who's more powerful or what, but there is no America lobby that is has anything like the influence that the Israel lobby has in Washington, D.C., right? No, and I've been doing quite a bit of, of research, as you know, into the genesis of this lobby in the 1960s. And was finding, you know, even at that time, a lot of the key players in the lobbies were so embedded into U.S. intelligence and, and uh, cozying up to the FBI and, and just embedding themselves into so many nexuses of, of power in the United States. And again, this is, you know, from the 60s. It's just, uh, it's incredible uh, how developed and how uh, powerful it has become. And that's not to say it's all powerful, and I think the fact that there's an antiwar.com and there's the blogosphere and people are at last being able to speak critically uh, to larger audiences about how damaging this is to the United States, I mean, that's, <laughs> at least there's that. But, you know, the All fact right, that... Playing, Grant. Hold it right there, man. We'll be right back, everybody, with Grant F. Smith from IRMEP, I-R-M-E-P dot org after this. Wait. You can sign up for the Liberty Radio Network email updates at updates.lrn.fm and join us on Facebook at facebook.lrn.fm. All right, kiddos, welcome back to the show. 
I'm assuming this thing's on. I don't know. I was cutting out. We got screwed up there a little bit, but I don't know. We're working it out. I'm Scott Horton. I'm talking with Grant F. Smith from the Institute for Research Middle East Policy. And, man, this guy knows more about Israeli influence in the United States than, well, I don't know anybody but the chair APAC, I guess. Now, um, where were we, Grant? You were talking about some history there. Yeah, um, I take exception to that because I, uh, you know, I, I think I know more than the chair of APAC. And uh, their PR director just recently resigned, and I, I've been tempted to, to call him and, and debrief him about how horrible his organization is. But anyway, the, the thing that makes me um, think that that uh, this is probably something and I mentioned this in my article, you know, we can assume, I think, that Jonathan Pollard, uh, if if not already, you know, if there hasn't been a decision of maybe, you know, putting this in play as part of extending the freeze, if that were the case, they would have to let him go right away uh, so that they could get the freeze extended. Uh, but I think given the fact that they already caught another spy, ben Ami Kaddish, uh, you know, back uh, a couple years ago, who was also doing the same thing as Pollard was doing, linked with his activities, had the same handler, and he was only fined fifty thousand dollars for stealing Patriot missile technology and all sorts of other things for Israel. I, I tend to think that, given how that case was handled, and the fact that Eric Holder uh, also refused. Uh, to, to properly handle the Mark Rich situation by issuing a presidential pardon for him under intense pressure of, of APAC and other groups. I tend to think that Jonathan Pollard will, in fact, be pardoned by Obama at some point. Uh, back in the 1990s, they tried to get Bill Clinton to pardon Jonathan Pollard, and he was threatened with massive resignations from the CIA and the FBI, and everybody was going to quit over that. He had to back down. Right, but who would, who would do that today? Panetta? Do you think that, you know, I, I tend to think that if Panetta threatened to resign, they'd probably say, well, that's fine, resign. And, you know, the FBI director is a holdover from the Bush administration. So I don't see that happening anymore. What, what I see, again, is that there's been a long-term effort, and this goes back to people who were smuggling weapons uh, for independence, um, you know, Kennedy made one of these pardons. Clinton made one of these pardons. Uh, Bush made one of these pardons. There have been a series of pardons uh, all geared to sort of clean up the historic record and make it seem like these were just little bumps in the road when, in fact, the great majority uh, of cases, um, according to some insiders, have never even entered the prosecutorial phase. They were just simply covered up in an earlier phase. Right. And... Um... John Miller, uh, no, wait, was it John Cole, uh, the FBI agent, counterintelligence agent, told me on this show that he mm-hmm. knew of, personally knew of 250 counterintelligence, counterespionage investigations into Israel that went nowhere. All right, that was a great interview. And, and, um, and so I, I tend to think that, again, given, given this intense drive, it was, you know, it was intelligent of, of uh, you know, this attempt to be made from the standpoint of, hey, hook Pollard up to just a dire moment for the Obama administration, which is called, you know, keep this, this fake peace process going all the way to the elections. Uh, I, I'm half surprised it hasn't worked, although, of course, we are on a Friday, and so if Pollard is on a plane to Tel Aviv right now. We probably wouldn't hear about it till 5 p.m. because that's when you release stories you want to die. Right. Well, you know, I don't know. People, if you don't know who Jonathan Pollard is, look it up. He stole the nuclear war plans for the Soviet Union uh, and uh, betrayed, I don't know about CIA agents, but at least all, virtually all of the CIA's assets in Russia were rolled up, they're called, uh, in the Soviet Union back then, were rolled up and killed, weren't they, Grant? I mean, this guy yeah, was pretty much some say that it was over, treason. Yeah, over 100, by some estimates, uh, agents uh, were rolled up and, and killed. And again, it was, the, the things that he was stealing was mainly for 